One of my all-time favorite models is this one. This is the Wild Safari Sorrow Pelter, and to me, it represents the perfect confluence of sculpting, paintwork, detail, pose, and proportion. I like it so much, I have two. Now, along with the Coelophysis, these are examples of what Safari can achieve, and I've always hoped for another model that matched up to these. Considering they came out in, I believe, 2015 and 2017 respectively. Yet, in 2021, we have the likes of... Yeah. Anyway, it seems that PNSO isn't done with surprises for 2020. I'd always hoped for a PNSO Sorrow Pelter, but never expected it, especially coming so soon after Borealo Pelter. Now, I love the idea of incredibly preserved ankylosaurs, and really, it would be a dream to have models of that well-preserved triumvirate of Sauropelta, Borealopelta, and Zool. So, here's the PNSO Sauropelta. Inevitably, I'll be making some comparisons to the exemplary wild safari because I'm sure you'd like to know. First, it's surprisingly small. In fact, it's, uh, it's about the same size or even smaller than the wild safari. Sauropelta itself was relatively small, estimated to be anywhere from 5 meters to 7.5 meters. So if I take a rough average of 6.5 meters, which is 21 feet, and this model being 18 centimeters or 7 inches, that would put this at a 1 to 36 scale, which is, I think, the same I estimated for Borealo Pelta. So if I'm accurate, then these two should go very well together on the shelf. Sorrow Pelta means lizard shield, compared to Borealo Pelta, which means northern shield. And excitingly, like Borealo Pelta, it has some of the best articulated fossils with armor in situ so we can create models with quite high accuracy. Now you can see that this is one prickly customer. Um, they're not quite as needle sharp as... Ouch! Okay, that, that was quite sharp. Um, I was about to say they're not quite as needle sharp as the Tuotiang Saurus, but still, you really should be careful, especially with little kids in the house. As a shield, the armor is of course of great interest. It has the triangular head with tapering snout, the post-orbital and jugal scutes are not as prominent as on the, uh, on the wild safari. And the cervical armor uh, includes these oval plates, which are flanked by triangular ones. But surprisingly, there doesn't seem to be a keel on their dorsal surfaces, as there should be, just like you see here on the wild safari. Uh, moving down, you can see how the spikes go down the sides of the body. And here we have the uh, dorsal thoracic armor, uh, which are these very low cones in transverse bands. And then over in the sacral region, forming the sacral shield, the armor becomes more of these circular, slightly dome plates, um, again, in transverse rows. Now here, I think, Safari has captured these differences more clearly than PNSO. Uh, you can see there's greater differentiation between the armor here and the armor over here. Whereas in the PNSO, uh, it does look a little more homogeneous in terms of form and shape. Now filling up in between are many irregular ossicles, an arrangement that may have allowed a bit of flexibility. And you can see just how sculpted with scute and scale throughout the body this is. So down here in the arms, um, note the almost seemingly mandatory skews nowadays on the forearms, legs, on the belly, and of course the flank as well. Now one distinctive feature of uh, Sauropelta is the long tail which is comprised of at least 40 caudal vertebrae, and they are about half the entire length of the animal. You can especially appreciate this by looking at the dorsal view. Look at how long that tail is. 
The tail is reinforced with ossified tendons from about the CA7 level all the way to the end. So uh, there's amount of stiffness that is uh, quite correct here, though uh, it is still less stiff than the Safari, as you can see here. Now, Sauropelta also has quite a long neck, which is captured nicely here. Now, one thing that's always struck me is the rather raised posture of the animal. Now, this isn't some low slung ankylosaur. Now, Carpenter noted this in his original paper, attributing it to the difference in limb lengths. And uh, as you can see in this promo image, that PNSO is very aware of that fact with the same high arch as the Carpenter illustration and modeling the Sauropelter on that, which is one aspect I do prefer on the PNSO compared to the Wild Safari, uh, which as you can see here is quite a lot flatter. And this posture then gives me the feeling that despite being a heavy animal, it might well be capable of bursts of speed. The hands have the right number of digits, which is five, and the feet have four toes. Interestingly, Carpenter suggested that the Tetrapodosaurus borealis footprints might have belonged to a nodosaur, perhaps even Sauropelta. Now, if that's truly the case, then based on the footprints, it's possible that Sauropelta has webs between the toes and a foot pad to cushion the animal, which you can see here. I like how these uh, pads seem to be kind of squashed up underneath. Uh, by the way, uh, Tetrapodosaurus is the name of the fossilized footprint itself, so don't go wasting your time trying to look up its appearance. Um, that's how trace fossils like footprints or burrows are in fact named. Interestingly, Tetrapodosaurus borealis has that borealis species name, which you might of course recognize as sharing a root with Borealopelta. So how's this compare with the release images? When I saw the release images, I always thought that the colour was quite drab, um, with just some feints of orange here in the neck area and perhaps the flank. Now, thankfully, in the actual model, these flashes are more intense on the cheeks, the throat, the sides. And it's always nice to have some highlights to break up colour monotony. Now, one thing I like from the product images is how these spikes are a much lighter grey, which again creates flashes of visual contrast to the main uh, darkness of the body. But just as with the Borealopelta, the actual spike colour is a bit darker, so you do lose some of that contrast. And sadly, while I absolutely love how fabulously painted this is here, um, you can see the, the spikes here with this craggy, almost cracked appearance, looking like a real horn, many of these subtleties are lost on the actual model. As you can see here, uh, it's a lot more simply painted. So while very nice in itself, this really is a bit of a letdown. And certainly compared even to the uh, Wild Safari, in some ways, I actually prefer the Wild Safari spikes. In fact, I'd have to say that uh, except for these fingers here, uh, maybe the toes, if you had the wild Safari Sauropelta, you'd still be very happy with that. It's still a masterpiece and it's going to stay on my shelf for a long time. Now, just for a comparison, here's the uh, Borealo Pelta, and you can see the obvious differences in size but you'll also see how very similar the body plan of these nodosaurids are. Perhaps even how homologous structures evolve differently, like these cervical rings. Now let me quickly bring back the wild safari and just look at this. A beautiful sight to behold. They look absolutely super together, including matching colour tones. And it's really a reminder that safari really can have this quality at affordable prices because even against these more recent PNSOs, it holds up really well. Now, all in all, PNSO has once again brought their remarkable skill to another very well preserved nodosaur. Now, I believe that this was due out in late December and I wonder just how many more will be revealed. Now, already we have uh, pictures of a Machairoceratops and a Cynoceratops, uh, which is a good thing because I do hope they spread out their different dinosaur families a little bit. 
um, you know, rather than coming up with a whole bunch of uh, ankylosaurs in a row. So for now, we can only wait with bated breath and for me, struggling credit. So have a great week ahead, guys, and try to save some money. More is coming from PNSO.